Okay, I think we fixed it. I think you fixed it. All right. Well, <laughs> so this combines, uh, in previous screencasts, we were talking about optical tracking. Face tracking is really computationally expensive. Optical tracking is really computationally inexpensive. But optical tracking, you can lose the point, right? So you can like confuse where the point is. But you can see here, the optical tracker right here, it's not getting confused, right? Because it's constantly being re Routed. oriented mm -hmm. by the face tracking. So we can do face tracking at low speed to save CPU power and then fill in the blanks with, between face tracking frames with optical tracking frames. So you can see here we have the grabber going into a JIT matrix 640 by 360, but here the, the through parameter is turned off, so it's not sending the video frames through until it, in, unless it gets a bang. So we're using a Q metro to slow down the frame rate of, uh, of our screen grabber. So grabbing is actually happening at 30 frames a second or something like that. Uh, but here we're only doing three, you know, three frames a second or roughly. Um, so phrase tracking doesn't have to do nearly as much work. Um, and it's taking the X and the Y center of wherever it finds a face and f using that to seed the optical tracker. So the little round dot here, the little uh, circle is the optical track point and it's um, orienting itself with face tracking information and then smoothing it out a bit. So you can see we get nice, smooth, relatively smooth face tracking here uh, at pretty high resolution. So we're at 640 by 360, which is higher resolution than, than I've normally done it. Yeah. But it seems to work pretty good. Um, and I can go up, down, left, right, and it doesn't get confused. I mean, it'll get confused for those frames between face track points. Uh, I don't know what it's going to do when you enter the scene here. It might, well, nothing. That's good. Because you're the primary. Yeah. If, if your face were to become bigger than mine, it would start tracking you. E. It's on my nose. Yep. Oh, we're too close. <laughs> now you're just <laughs> Scary freaking blur. it out. Um, so yeah, this combination of optical and face tracking, it looks a little complicated, but if you can deal with the complexity of it, you get a lot of you get a lot for free. So um, it just increases the uh, efficiency of the face tracking exponentially. By a lot. Right. Yeah, by a lot. Um, by a lot. All right. Yeah. What are we What are we missing here? So let me just recap. This blue part is the actual face tracker, and that's just outputting the X and the Y. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that at low speed, and the way we're getting low speed is turning the through zero, turning uh, a JIT matrix at, with the through zero parameter. And that means throughput is turned off. Uh, we're using the Q metro to actually output those frames instead of having it be automatic, it's manual. So uh, we have to do the Q metro to send out those frames. We could, we could uh, drastically, let's say every two seconds, we wanna do a face track. And that's really low speed. We're still getting high speed um, optical tracking here, but it could get confused. That comes back. I mean, it's always going to come back when it when it gets a new face from the face tracker. Mm -hmm. So depending on the nice thing about this technique is you could turn this Q metro to value to whatever sort of CPU problems you're having. If you have a right. really slow computer, maybe you want Q metro two thousand. If you have a fast computer or whatever your application is, uh, you could turn that up to you know 100 or 200 or whatever. So we could turn this to like um, 100, and we're going to do a lot of face tracking, uh, but it's still getting smoothed out by the uh, optical tracker. And then in this case, then it's really not going to get confused for very long. Right. The optical tracker. All right. Make sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool.